This is this is Kuvan Cassius for IFL TV. We're in Manchester here for the final press conference between George Groves and Carl Frotch. With me, I've got George Groves. Leave off. How are you, George? I'm good, thank you. You good? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Been saying for a couple of days now that you were going to tell Carl exactly how you were going to beat him in what way, and you did that today. So what do you, what do you think? Sound alright? Yeah, it's, listen. Is that it's how you'd beat Carl? I don't know how I'd beat Carl. A few weights different. Right, yeah, uh, I've been thinking about it. this is how I would do it. What, what, what was it specifically about saying it today? And I sort of asked you the other day. And he's, he's, a, he's a hard nut to crack in that, you know, you, you tell him something and I'm not sure he really understands what you're trying to say. And I tried to spell it out as clear as possible today as well. And he still said, what did you say? And kind of got it wrong. But he can go back and look at it and see what was said. And then he knows. He's got 48 hours to adjust to what I'm going to do. And then he's got three rounds to understand it. And then... And it's going to get hard for him. What was, what, what was that? Because you, you said that the first three rounds what was going to happen, and then after that you said it was kind of up to him. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of up to him because then I'm going to show him something else. Then I'm going to show him something else. And I've got, I've got plenty to show him, but I can pick and choose when I want to do that. For a moment I thought you were actually going to go through each round. Yeah, no. One to twelve. <laughs> I did. Yeah, when you started yeah. off round one, I thought... Round one. Gonna... I thought I'd get now. The first three rounds, yeah. otherwise no one's going to buy the pay-per-view. Live on Sky. Absolutely, live on Sky. Is that? Um, George, this is obviously the final press conference. It's the last time you, apart from the Wayne in tomorrow, that you're really going to see each other before the fight and talk to each other if that. Um, do you regret or anything that you've said in this build-up or wish you hadn't said it? Or Why, is there anything you think I should No, there isn't. I'm just asking if there's anything. I don't think I've said anything that um, has been disrespectful, to be yeah. honest. Apart from one thing I said on Ringside where I called him a chump, um, but that was to sum up a, you know, a Ringside episode. Um, he said he's going he's to whoop me, he's called me a chump, he's called me a pet, he's called me a child, he said he's going to say my breath smells, don't like my trousers, like, Jesus, like, you know, what state is he in that that's the best he can come up with? The disrespect that I'm getting shown is many of the above, as well as he refuses to shake my hand, he can't answer my question, he refuses to, to talk to me when I'm asking him simple questions, he won't make eye contact with me. These are not respectful things. And um, he's disguised it by calling me disrespectful. And the fact that he's world champion and he's got a bit of a following, people just accept it for face value. But the truth is, he's actually listened to it, it makes no sense. Much like the technical side of the way we've approached this fight, when I've explained what I'm going to do, what he's explaining he's going to do which one are you going to go with when it, which one makes more sense so no there's nothing in this build up that I've said that, um, that I feel I shouldn't have said I've told him how I'm going to beat him on Saturday and if I can't do that then maybe I shouldn't have said it but I know I can so on Saturday D- during this whole build up it seems evident that Cole sort of feels that you've uh, undermined what he's a- achieved in his career and kind of dismiss if I, you like I've said that he's been a great ambassador for British boxing yeah. I've said that he's been a great world champion um, what more could I possibly say he did an interview saying that if I if I'd shown up and said oh um, it's, it's nice to get the opportunity to get in there with such a, a great fighter it's just, uh, I'll give it my best and then he might have gone easy on me what, what does that mean he's only knocked me out a little bit so knocked me out a lot he announced himself as an international superstar. He, uh, he, all he ever talks about is his legacy, and, and refers to, so he refers to himself as a legend. But I mean, leg- legacy is history. History. I wouldn't want to describe myself as a current fighter talking about history because that means you're in the past. I'll put him in the past and give him his legacy if he wants. He'll be remembered for the wins he's had. And the times where he has struggled, you know, against Jermaine Taylor, Andre Durrell, Glenn Johnson, where he got the wins, people will forget that in time because it will just be the box rec record win. You know, that, that will be all that matters. So, the sooner I retire, the better for him. Um, this is a bit of a point, it's been to say, but I sent a tweet out the other day. No way. Yeah, I sent a tweet out the other day, just said, look, retweet this if you think that Carl will win or uh, favourite it if you think that I was one of those desperate things for yeah, to get, get followers oh please follow me oh like but me it was a lot love it, me you, I was just going to give you the, the final stats of it really. go on then go for it well it was kind of um, Carl Frotch about 370 and you about 310 are you just giving out numbers for how many how many followers and tweets no, you've no, had no, and no, I'm being serious but I was just, it was more closer than, than than you could have possibly imagined 
sure. No, it doesn't. It doesn't for one second um, mean anything, really, because it's down to people's opinions, and opinions are fun because it engages people, gets people interested in the fight. But uh, but do you feel as the underdog fighter going into this? Of course, of yeah. course. Get, take yourself down Labrush, get three to one. Do you know what I mean? Why not do it? Um, I'm the underdog. That's that's and that is more than fine with me. I've been there, done that. You know, I enjoy it. It's nice. And afterwards, I can say, oh, do you know what? I won a few people over here. A few people over say, oh, I wasn't so sure about him before, but oh, he's not bad. He's a good fighter. You know? Nothing left to be said. Nothing left to be said. Nothing. Left. We got two more days now, anyway. So two more days. Um, any news on Adam Booth turning up in the corner? Um, Still highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. You know more than me. You know well, he's going to be there because obviously Andy Lee's fighting, so we know he's definitely going to be there. Yeah, apparently you know he, he trains Andy Lee and, and Andy Lee's fighting now, so he could be there. I did another tweet about that as well. Did but you? We'll talk about that off off camera. Really? Why? I just wonder what people thought. I mean, a lot of people do think he's going to turn up in your corner. So. Well, no. Why not, eh? More people think he's not though. So. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't see that tweet. Otherwise, I could. I could have retweeted or, or, or favourited. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, never say never. Highly unlikely. Okay. Le- le- I'd say in a percentage-wise. Yeah. Negative. Negative equity. Percentage. Just rate the chances between one and ten of him being in your corner. Is between, one the highest or lowest? Yeah, no, one ten being he is going to be in your corner, one being he's not going to be in your corner. Or, yeah. I don't know, I'll have to check what the um, train ticket price is for, um, for Manchester. Because um, he drives a big car and um, if I was going to bring him, you know, if, if I was, it costs a lot for his petrol. Do you know what I mean? Plus, it's like you can't get a hotel room up here. It's, the Lowry is like £700 a night now because they've got like two rooms left. It's like. Um, you know, so in that, in that respect, because of the hotels, it's highly unlikely. So you'd say like two? David? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. We'll, we'll stick with highly unlikely then. All right, George Groves, thank you very much for talking to us. Good luck. Come Saturday, Wayne Thanks. tomorrow. Nice one. And Cheers. I don't mind your trousers, actually. You're the third person to say it to me. Hold on. Well, more than that. You done? All right, yeah, well, I am oh, done. Sorry, I you no, I'm done. He's done. He's been done for a long time. I've been done for a long time. <laughs>